one of the best placements to have for Venus is when Venus is delighted by Saturn. So the delight of Ashta or the Mudita Vashta. Um, this occurs when Venus is in a sign of Saturn in Capricorn or in Aquarius or when Venus is opposite Saturn or when Venus is aspected strongly by Saturn. So this is neat because Saturn in Vedic astrology has a special aspect. He's given a full strength aspect to the third house and to the tenth house from him. Um, this is really neat and you know actually just so you know I said it was a Vedic aspect but if you go back and read uh, the great William Lilly, the great Renaissance astrologer, uh, he, read, he wrote a book called Christian Astrology. If you go and read in there, he actually does give these aspects for Saturn. He gives Mars a special fourth and eighth house aspects, and he gives Jupiter a special fifth and ninth house aspect. So really, those aspects were a part of Western astrology in ancient times as well, believe it or not. Um, and if you're curious about aspects and why those planets have those particular aspects, I would highly recommend checking out my video about the five elements and the five types of aspects. But anyways, for, for this video, all you need to know is that Saturn fully aspects uh, with full sight, full drishti. His full gaze falls upon the third house and the tenth house from uh, where he's at, along with, of course, the opposite, like every planet does. So actually, if you have Saturn in Aquarius and you have Venus in Aries, for example, then that Venus is being aspected by Saturn, and in this case, that Venus will be delighted by Saturn. So, <clears throat> you can actually have your Venus in any sign, and still have it delighted by Saturn via aspect. And then also, when it comes to these Avashtas, you actually want to look at all the different Vargas. So you look at all 16 charts, and there will be in different signs, and different placements, and all those different houses. And so, it gets very, very sophisticated and intricate, but that is the nature of human life. Human life on Earth is very complicated, so if astrology does not reflect that sophistication and complicatedness, then I don't want anything to do with it, because then it's not real, and it's not true. Um, and I only say that because, you know, one person was commenting, you know, really everybody liked it, but I had one comment that was like, no, I don't really, this isn't lining up, this isn't accurate, um, this seems too complicated, you know, like you should keep it simpler. And, yeah, I'm actually really good at keeping things very simple, I think, in a lot of regards, but you know, is is the story of finding fulfillment on Earth a simple story? No, it's a very, very complicated one. There's a lot of, like, you know, subtleties and nuances to whether a human being is fulfilled on planet Earth. So, no, I don't think we can just assess Venus in a very, like, basic, simple way. Um, I think we these avashas are really a profound tool, um, and they won't be forgotten as a result. So, anyways, uh, again, another example would be, like, say Venus is in Leo, where it's starved, but then say it is, uh, Saturn is in Scorpio, so it's aspecting the tenth from Scorpio goes to Leo, so then Venus is getting delighted that way. So it's really neat. You can see this happening in a lot of different ways. Um, and even if Venus is conjunct Saturn, it's still being delighted, but also being starved. And to see which of those you get more of, that is a much more complicated thing, but when you, that's why Parashar gave us Shadbala and all these more sophisticated calculations, so that you can pick that apart and and get more detailed but I, that won't be something that is for the scope of this video um, now yeah so when it comes to Venus delighted by Saturn so you get someone with Venus in Cap or in Aquarius um, Venus opposed by Saturn you get someone who basically finds a lot of they just find more fulfillment on their chosen path in life than the average person you know Venus is about finding fulfillment in life and about external things, like external things that can make you feel more fulfilled and more content. Um, that's why Venus rules vehicles or clothing or, you know, a wife or something like that. These are all things that make life more bearable and um, comfort the path of our life and help us find more fulfillment in life and make better decisions that lead to harmony, greater harmony. All these things. This is all Venus's job. So Saturn, you know, he's always given such a bad rap, but Saturn is about longevity and about, you know, healing on this planet and about becoming psychologically, like, more whole and complete. And that is why Saturn rules the end of the Zodiac. Saturn would not rule the end of the Zodiac if it wasn't something we all inevitably have to come to. 
and what we all inevitably have to um, surrender sort of is our ego complexes so therefore like Saturn is a planet of realism you know what I mean and being very realistic and so Venus is a planet of fulfillment and it is good it is a good idea to like have a realistic foundation for you to to work with in what in when you're seeking fulfillment do you see what I'm saying so just like how the moon can make one kind of in more of a fantasy idea of how love should be and how romance should be and there's just this kind of uh, aspect of it that's sort of a fantasy um, it's more in the emotions and um, maybe not so realistic about what life on earth can really deliver I mean is there really going to be a knight in shining armor who can take you away and who can always make you feel happy no matter what and even when winter comes and you're cold and starving and you're just in blissful love all the time well like we'd all love that to happen but on planet earth it's just not the case normally and it's it is a fantasy if you expect everyone on planet earth to be able to find that um, one or two might find that but that's that would be shown in their chart as a really really profound thing um, a really special good karma so what I'm getting at is that if you look at most life on earth like most happy fulfilled couples they are not like it's not like there was everything was perfect the whole time and that's why they fell in love no there was always suffering there were always challenges there were always difficulties there were always burdens in love I mean what is a love story without burdens and separation and longing you know that's Saturn you see what I'm saying so Saturn just somehow feeds Venus in a really healthy way Saturn somehow supports Venus and sometimes it is mysterious to understand why but it still works so yeah this person basically just finds more fulfillment on whatever path they chose you know what I mean in life because they chose basically Venus is your path that you choose and they chose a more like grounded and solid path from the Saturnian sense which is which is a good thing so like they tend to be just a greater partner like across the board and they tend to be uh, like able to bear burdens much more uh, fully and without complaining and things like that so they're a really desirable partner to have like this is just a really really desirable placement to have um, I wrote some notes down here let me make sure I cover everything though like yeah they will bear burdens that another person would make a big deal out of but they don't even make a big deal out of them um, they're a better planner with they're more of a they have more of like a long-term outlook towards love you know which is important so they have more of a sense of devotion and longevity to their love whereas like I said the moon and Venus moon's always changing so they're just like oh I'm in love with you this week but next week it's someone else that I'm in love with and then on and on and that's not someone that you want to commit to you know that you're gonna get hurt uh, if that you know what I mean if that's the case um, they tend to even like find a lot more happiness in hard work you know and they kind of find more happiness in a lot of these Saturnian things like being on a budget you know um, I've dated girls that don't have this and girls that do have this and it's just a dramatic difference and you want to be with the girls that have this if you have a choice but of course uh, if life was just like that we could choose everything we wanted then we wouldn't be doing this astrology we would just be you know choosing the optimum thing all the time no no I'm an astrologer so I know that sometimes there's not much you can do about things and you're just in a position that you have to be in um, but if you're lucky to have a mate that has Venus delighted by Saturn you know aspected or in the sign of Saturn then you can be happy you might notice some of these qualities are really desirable qualities that your mate has um, it's kinda like you you can still have anguish or pain or suffering in your heart but you just see it in the greater context and you realize that that's a part of life no relationships gonna be perfect and so you can still hold on to the good you know what I mean and then it keeps growing as a result so it's really a healthy sign or place for Venus to be in um, they accept suffering as a part of life and they're not you know they accept the reality of life like what did the Buddha say life is full of suffering you know I mean ask most older wise people though they will confirm that idea to you so like what's sad is that most people on planet earth haven't even accepted that fact of life we've gotten all this intellectual education but we really don't know the facts of life until we know that and then until we learn how to how to get around that sad truth that everything in life is impermanent and not going to last and therefore going to lead to suffering so anyways Venus and, and Saturn signs 
delighted or even with Saturn conjunct it is going to be someone who gets this more and, and who seeks things that are um, of a more lasting nature, of a less impermanent nature, of a less transient quality. Um, yeah, you know, so like partners that have this, they'll be willing, it's kind of like Venus, like how I was saying, Venus with Sun will sacrifice relationships. Well, this is like they'll do it in a little bit more of a healthy way. They'll just let go and just separate and detach. They'll use that separating power of Saturn, but in a really good way, and in a healthy way. And it'll be in, a, in such a way that it's just like they know that in order to get to the more fulfilled place, they have to be realistic. And so they just let go of things that aren't helping them and, and adhere to and devote themselves to the thing that is helping them. Um, so yeah, this is like one of, this is probably my, one of my favorite things to see happening for Venus, really, maybe even more than a Venus exalted. I mean, I've dated women that have Venus exalted, really profound stuff, but they weren't great partners to date. And they weren't, they weren't like, they had a really high and beautiful desire nature and a really high quality to their love, but they weren't great partners to date overall. And, um, they were kind of like fantastical because they still didn't have this, um, this delight from Venus and Saturn, so they still didn't have like realism enough and um, had unrealistic expectations in love and things, and so they were always getting hurt all the time, um, which would hurt their their partners too, and yada yada yada. And um, so if you have someone, you know, who's doesn't even matter what sign the Venus is in, if it's just got Saturn aspecting it from the third house aspect or the tenth house aspect then that's really a nice thing to have. It's a really desirable thing to have. And then also check all the different Varga charts because you may not have this in your Rashi chart, but you might have it in some of the other Vargas. You might have it in your Novamsha chart or your Septamsha chart or D60 or D40 or any of these other things. So here's another way to look at it. Um, it's kind of like a beautiful sunset. A beautiful sunset shouldn't last all day. Like it wouldn't be as as really truly beautiful if the sun was always like that you know what I mean then we might not appreciate it so you know there's impermanence there's like a quality to, of beauty and Venus that works really harmoniously with time and impermanence and like Venus can rule luxury like say eating ice cream I mean would you really do, does anyone really think it's a good idea to try to eat ice cream all day long perpetually always eating ice cream no there's a time and a place for ice cream as a reward you know from suffering from something hunger from something challenging so you need to sweat you need to suffer you need to feel pain in this world which is Saturn and that somehow makes the reward even better which is like Venus you know what I mean so there's just this really interesting connection between Saturn and Venus. And another thing I wanted to note was that it's kind of like in the way that they're more realistic about love, like I was trying to say. There was this one time when I was working at the health food grocery store. This was back in 2010. I was not an astrologer. Like, I mean, I, study, I was studying astrology and meditating and doing yoga and stuff, but I'd heard, I was like, you know, we had to front all the gross, all the products. We had to pull all the products to the front of the shelves. You know what I mean? Like the cereal boxes before we closed. So it all looked nice and pretty. And that was, you know, what we had to do at, at the end of the day. And I just remember doing that and overhearing this woman talking to some guy she had, you know, run into at the grocery store. They're talking about getting along in a relationship, something like that. He was like, blah, blah, blah. She was like, oh, well, that's just whatever. All that really matters is does your crap, does your BS line up with his crap and his BS and his issues in such a way that they don't make you guys provoke each other all the time. You know what I mean? That it makes you guys both get along and you can both enjoy each other and and you're not getting in each other's way all the time. You know what I mean? Going against the grain. And that, I think, is what this Venus delighted by Saturn is about. Like, I bet that woman had a delighted Venus by Saturn. Um, so it's basically like the person can bear the crap, they can bear the difficult sides of the relationship, which always inevitably there is some other side of it. You know what I mean? So they can just handle that more smoothly, so then they go right back to the good thing more. You know what I mean? And it's like nothing can stop a person like that. You know what I mean? Um, so these partnerships tend to last longer and tend to be better. And um, a person with without this delight of Venus would just leave a relationship that's actually really good for them. They will just, 
they would just get frustrated and leave it sooner. You know what I mean? Like if it's in Leo, they'll just burn it up and sacrifice it. Or if it's in Cancer, they'll just be like sad and emotional. Why can't it be this way? And imagine and cry and just wish it could be another way. You know what I mean? And then leave eventually because they think that they're going to get that other person. But then karmically, they get an even worse person, um, typically, a lot of times. Um, so you really want to try to like take, if you don't have, basically, if you don't have Venus fly by Saturn and you do have the moon and sun thing, just do whatever I just said in this video. Just train from here on out. Day one is starting now. I will be that person. I will make myself be that type of partner. I will seek partners like that. Review what I just said in the video. Okay, I will be more realistic in, in love. I will not be uh, emotional and expect a fantasy relationship. You know what I mean? Blah, 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 blah. And just apply those things until they become natural. Then, um, then you know, you'll find someone. And even if you don't in this life, say you're much older, then in your next life, you reincarnate and you find someone in that life. And you reincarnate without a star of Venus. Um, that's basically why this is a yogic science. That's what we're doing. If you do that, you just did... You just did yoga, basically. Um, yeah, so they just aren't as pushy with love. They know that any amount of love that they can get is great. Um, because, And they know that, you know, life isn't here forever. And so it's important to just, you know, appreciate what you get in life and not complain. So it's a really good placement. Yeah, so I know I kind of talked about some of the difficult things with moon and sun. This is one of the really desirable, really, really, really amazing things that you can have going on. And Venus can be delighted in two other ways as well. When it is in a sign of Mercury, or when it's with Mercury, Mercury delights it. And also when it's conjunct Jupiter, which is a special thing that I'll talk about in another video. Alright, guys, take care.